The Mount Coast R1 is a shoe design for that racer looking to run that ultra marathon distance on the road. But is there a place for this shoe on the feet of anyone else? Today, we are going to talk all about what it's like to run in the Mount Coast R1. I have to be entirely honest with you, I tried making this video a few different times, so hopefully, hopefully today works out. Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Matt and this is what matters to Matt. And yes, on today's video, we are going to talk all about the Mount Coast R1. Now to get a disclosure out of the way right off the bat, this was a shoe that Mount Coast sent me for the purpose of review. However, they are certainly not paying me to make this video and they're not going to get a chance to see this before you find folks do here on YouTube. Now. In my last year review video, I talked all about the Mount Coast S1 that's sitting back there on the shelf. And I said in that video that its number one competitor was gonna be its big brother, this guy right here, the Mount Coast R1. And there was one big reason why I said that, but after I got thinking about it, there's, there's really two. First one is that there is only a $10 difference between the R1, their racer, and the S1, their daily trainer. Second reason is that in my shoe rotation, if I was gonna have just one of these shoes, it's gonna fit into the same category. Spoiler alert, that is smack dab in the middle of just being a traditional daily trainer for me. Uh, it's gonna fit in that same slot, whether I get the R1 or the S1. So by the end of this video, I will let you know if I had to pick just one of these two shoes, which one would I pick up? This is not gonna be a full on comparison video, but I do promise you by the end, I'll let you know which one I would pick up. We're gonna go down to the upper, the midsole, and the outsole, and ultimately I'm gonna let you know whether I think the Mount Coast R1 is worth your hard earned cash. But we're gonna start with talking for just a sec about some of the specs. All right, so the weight of the R1. Mount Coast listed at 8.5 ounces or 240 grams in a US men's size nine. I do not wear a men's size nine. I wear this whopping US men's size 13. And when I put that on the scale, it weighs 284 grams. Stack height in this shoe is 35 millimeters in the heel and 27 millimeters in the four foot for an eight millimeter drop. And according to Mount Coast, and I think, I don't think we're gonna see the price change anytime soon on this because it is a fairly new shoe. We're looking at $160 US. So let's start with talking about that upper and it is one of the more interesting parts to the shoe. We have a dual lacing system happening here and we've got a traditional lace right to about there. And then below that, we've got this quick lacing system. And what Mount Coast is actually saying that's for is that if you're out there and you're running those incredibly long distances on the road and your foot starts to swell, you're able to make some quick adjustments to the bottom half of the shoe. You don't have to unlace the top half. You can simply just loosen this up or tighten this up as you need it throughout the run. That was a little bit lost on me. Again, I'm not gonna be using this for an ultra marathon on the road. I am simply a mere marathon runner and I am simply going to be using this as a daily trainer. But, but, Sagi running, and I am pronouncing that horribly, I'm sorry, but he did a review on the shoe and he actually replaced this whole thing with just a traditional lace. And if I do end up putting this into my shoe rotation and running a lot more miles, I will do a long-term review and I will probably try that out just to see how it goes. If you are not subscribed to my channel and you wanna come back and check that out and check the long-term in this shoe, I've got about 100 miles in it so far. You're gonna to have to subscribe, check out some of my other videos. I think I've got a lot of really good content out there that a lot of people can relate to and are gonna get a lot of information out of it, at least start some conversations. All right, some other parts to this upper. We are looking at a dual layer jacquard mesh here and the padding, the padding around the heel collar is just, just what you'd find in a good solid daily trainer. That also translates into the tongue, just, uh, just what you would find in a good solid daily trainer. And also where this is a shoe that's meant to be comfortable and support you on those long runs, there is a lot of structure back here. I can barely press that at all. And when it comes to sizing, this does fit true to size. I've got just about a thumbs width at the end of the shoe, but one of the other things that they keep, they keep an eye on and that I really, really enjoy is that it doesn't narrow off too much up here at the top of the shoe. So you do get lots of width, lots of room to splay those toes, and it just translates into a comfortable upper. 
The lacing is a little bit finicky and it did take me a couple of runs, a few runs to get that dialed in just right. So not a huge fan of that system, but I get what they were trying to do there. But overall, the upper is really, really comfortable and does, once you get that right, kind of disappear on your foot and just does the job. Nothing too crazy fancy, but does the job. The midsole. The midsole on this shoe is something that Mount Coast is calling their light self foam. And it's the same foam that they did put back there in the S1. And it is a Piba super critical blend that they say is 45% bouncier and 50% lighter than the standard EVA. Now, another way to describe it for me would be a slightly livelier version of EVA. So if you're somebody who's run in a traditional EVA shoe, think of a trainer from a few years ago, this feels lighter, feels a little bit more nimble, and does have a little bit more energy return to it. It's not going to be super exciting like some of those newer foams that we see out there coming out of some of the shoe companies that's super squishy and has a lot of energy return, but it's something that can be very protective and is welcomed for me when I'm running just my daily miles. Not something that I want to race in, but certainly something that gives me enough back and feels comfortable enough and protective enough that if you just want a no-nonsense shoe that you don't feel like it's slowing you down, the R1 and that light cell phone might be exactly what you're looking for. So not super exciting, not a ton of energy return, not a ton of squish, but enough protection there and enough energy return that it just becomes a good daily trainer that you can use for a number of different things. If I was going to use this on a run, it's anywhere from recovery pace all the way up to even tempo. It's not something I'm gonna use for a track workout. It's not something that I would use for an actual race, like a marathon, half marathon, 10K or 5K, but it is a shoe that allows you to run a number of different paces, and it is a midsole that, that I think fits really, really good if you're looking for a no-nonsense daily trainer. Last bit of tech I wanna mention on this midsole is this zero sag insert. Now the longest run that I've had in this shoe is actually just 25 kilometers or what's that, maybe 15 miles. So I haven't had this on a really, really long run, but that insert is meant to keep the shoe from bottoming out. And I had no issues, at least on that run, from bottoming out in this shoe. From step one to the last step, it felt very, very comfortable, very, very similar ride. It never seemed to die out on me at all in that run. And it hasn't really felt a whole lot different between day one to now after about 100 miles in this shoe. So. So far, durability on that midsole has been really, really good. Let's move on to talk about the outsole. So we've talked about the upper, we've talked about the midsole. Now we get to move on to talking about that outsole. And Mount Coast is using, again, something a little bit different in this shoe. They're using a CPU material. Now I'll put that up here on the screen because I can never remember what that actually stands for. But I can tell you that it provides a couple of different things. It is lighter than your traditional rubber and also I feel that it's a little bit more flexible. I think a lot of times one of the places that we don't look when we're talking about how stiff a shoe is and how it actually rides is in that outsole and having a big slab of rubber does have an impact on that. So there is quite a bit of flexibility in this shoe, which I really do like. It does make it feel just a little bit more nimble. It does make it feel like you got a little bit more ground feel, lots of protection. That's not been a problem, but a little bit more ground feel. So overall, I do like running in this material. A couple of different spots where it might be a little bit of an issue for me is one, I haven't had the chance to run this in the rain. So if you are gonna run this shoe out there in the rain, let me know in the comments down below how that actually turned out for you. So I'm a little bit suspect about how much grip you actually get from this in the rain. But if you are really concerned about this, more recently Mount Coast released an R1R version of this shoe. And the only difference between this one and the R1R is that the R1R has a rubber outsole. The other issue I had with the outsole, and this is a small one, and it's not when I was out on the run. There was a day a couple weeks ago where I wore this to the gym just to run a few miles on the treadmill, which worked out perfectly fine. But then I realized I didn't have my other shoes with me and I had to get off to work. So I wore this teaching all day and this was a loud shoe. It squeaked everywhere I went, whether I was on hardwood floor, whether I was on tile, that CPU, that material, maybe something in the tread pattern did squeak really, really quite a bit. And so it was a little bit loud. So not something that I would normally wear just day to day walking around, but definitely something that I would wear out there on the run. 
when it comes to traction, um, it was good. Nothing spectacular. I would say I wouldn't put it up there with Puma Grip or Continental Rubber, but it did the job, worked really, really well. Again, if you want to check out the R1R, if you're not sure about the CPU, you can certainly do that. But overall, a really good outsole. So who do I think this shoe is for? Well, of course, if you are one of those crazy folks that are looking to run an ultra marathon on the road, this is definitely a shoe you do want to check out. I think it, I think they hit the mark on exactly who they were trying to build this shoe for. But if you are someone looking for a no nonsense daily trainer, aside from, you know, maybe that upper and that dual lacing system, which you can change if you want to, but if you're looking for a no nonsense daily trainer that just works, it's going to support you and allow you to log lots and lots of daily miles. This is definitely something that I might check out at $160. It competes quite well into that daily trainer category. And I think, I think it would be worth your hard earned cash. That's it guys. That's going to be the end of this video. I am really happy that I got a chance to run in this shoe because I think it is a really solid shoe that I am going to be putting quite a few more miles on. Not super exciting, but gets the job done. My name is Matt and this has been What Matters Matt and ultimately what matters to me most is my family. I'll see you guys in the next video. Step one, wake up brother gonna rise the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four, can everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.